I hope that we will at least informally agree on a threefold pledge regarding our offshore policy. And that is first, that no victim of a spill should ever go uncompensated, that taxpayers should never be on the hook for a company's damages, and third, that these priorities are managed in a way that not only preserves but also promotes a competitive domestic offshore industry. I think that that should be agreeable and achievable for all of us. One of the true ironies and the tragedies of the Gulf disaster was that it both opened and reopened such horrific wounds for the fishermen and others who saw their livelihoods compromised by its sudden impact. These effects were, first, were brought first by the oil spill and later by the administration's moratorium on offshore drilling, which has cost thousands of jobs and had a chilling effect on our nation's energy policy. We have to begin confronting those choices today. More specifically, we have to decisively recognize the risks and the rewards of offshore energy exploration. There's simply no better way to take measure of those risks and rewards than by visiting the Gulf of Mexico, witnessing the balance between the many users of the ocean and their respect for one another. In my experience, the fishing, tourism, and energy industries are perfectly capable of coexisting, just as they did for many decades before last year's incident. The economies of states like Alaska and Louisiana indisputably depend on all three, and the loss of any one will lead to instability and hardship. Americans require seafood, we love our vacations at the beach, and we depend on oil to live our lives. It's a delicate balance, but a coexistence that we have to sustain. So I view our job here, Mr. Chairman, as finding a way to return to a point where our regulators and industry are working to keep all three of these sectors in a secure and sustainable livelihood. We absolutely need to look at ways to improve our offshore system and make those operations safer. The uncertainty that we've had to face over the past year has been staggering, and I hope that today's hearing will provide some ideas and some clarity as we chart an expeditious path forward. 